Hey everyone, Saul here. I have only one rule here. If it's animated, I'll comment on it. And I'm here today as a guest of Cartoon Watchers to talk about a superhero satire cult classic from the early 90s known as The Tick. This is a series I've wanted to talk about for some time, so what better time than now? I mean, technically any time is fine, but I just didn't think of it until now, so yeah. Anyway, The Tick, ladies and gentlemen. Alrighty, let's start things off right with a look at the plot, which involves the titular character, the Tick, who's a superhero assigned to the city in order to be its protector. The Tick, along with his sidekick Arthur and the other superheroes of the city, face off against a rogues gallery of, well, rogues, all the while spouting off strange life lessons and morals and yelling his signature battle cry of, Well, I'll give the series this. There's nothing wrong with keeping it simple. It's your average superhero protects a city from danger scenario, with not a whole lot of deviation from that formula. But in all fairness, the strangeness of the events that befall Tick and Arthur do give it its own unique flavor that isn't necessarily spellbinding, but is still conventionally entertaining nonetheless. And just like any superhero story worth its salt, there's quite a cast of characters here, but in order to keep it simple, I'll just go over the most important ones, starting with, obviously, the Tick himself, who's the big blue protector of justice and good, and who always has some tidbit of oddly phrased wisdom on hand at the end of any battle. The Tick has super strength and is, as he puts it, nigh invulnerable, meaning he can take an exorbitant amount of physical damage and still be peachy keen right after. Normally I find characters who have little to no weaknesses boring, but with the Tick, it's a little different because his personality is like an odd menage a trois of the Crimson Chin from The Fairly Odd Parents, Wander from Wander Over Yonder, and Dad from The Brack Show, in that he always acts like a wide-eyed child, greeting each day with enthusiasm and positivity, which I'd normally hate, but coming from a big, blue, hugely muscled human Adonis such as him is quite amusing and endearing. So the Tick himself certainly gets some big points here. Next up is Arthur, a former accountant who constantly wears a functioning moth costume and becomes the Tick's sidekick. Arthur is a bit of a nebbish character, being timid and afraid of conflict, though he definitely has more brains than the Tick, making him the intellectual core of their partnership. Despite that though, I don't much care for Arthur. He's just a bit too whiny for my tastes, but I can certainly understand why others would like him. And then there's all the other recurring heroes of the city, including Der Fledermaus, a Batman parody who would rather look at himself in the mirror than fight crime. American Maid, a combination of Wonder Woman and Captain America, who cleans up crime with her high heels and tiara. And Sewer Urchin, an Aquaman and Dustin Hoffman from Rain Man parody, who patrols the sewers, keeping them safe while also smelling like a rotting cesspool in the sun. All of them are conventional, nothing too bad or good. They're just okay. The same can be said about all the villains that make their appearances, like Chairface Chippendale, a suave man who has a chair for a head, El Seed, a sentient sunflower who looks to wrestle control of the world from humans by using plants, the Breadmaster, a talented baker who bakes bread bombs, Mr. Mental, a hypnotist who wants to get the mental power of the gods, and a bunch of other villains too. Alright, now that that's all cleared up, let's talk about what makes this series good, okay? So now, one of the best things about this show is the Tick himself, as I mentioned before. I don't need to elaborate much more, since I already said most of the reasons why I enjoy him, but to be honest, he's about 90% of this whole series, meaning that if he and his weirdly upbeat attitude was removed from the show, it would be pretty boring and lifeless, I'd have to say. Plus, some of the parody and satire aspects work well within the series, and there are some genuinely funny moments spackled all throughout the runtime, which makes it a good chuckle if you're in the mood. But now let's talk about the bad things, and I'll try to make this as painless as possible, okay? Well then, I always hate starting things off this way, because it's such a subjective topic to discuss, but this series, I find, is quite, well, boring. Not so boring that my eyes melt into hot slag, but that kind of boredom you feel when it's like your brain is filled with static. As I said, this series is funny, but not quite enough. It has some action, but not enough. It has some interesting character interactions, but again, just not enough. 
That's my main problem with this series, is that it never feels like it's going far enough in any direction. It feels stuck in this weird position where it wants to be for adults but can't, due to the network it aired on, yet it isn't adept enough to slip things past the censors, like Animaniacs, The Ren and Stimpy Show, or Rocco's Modern Life. Leaving it in this awkward situation where it doesn't seem to be doing things the way it truly wants, and just comes off as janky and dull. That's just my interpretation of the series though, you don't have to agree with me. Another fairly large issue is that the animation, while moderately decent most of the time, does have some rather noticeable layering issues that really don't take a sharp eye to spot. I mean, if this isn't something you care about, then I doubt you'll see it as a bad thing, but it's those sort of issues that really start to pile up with me. The Tick is a bit of a middling affair. I know that it's still a cult classic, and the series rocketed the property into the public's eye, but still, I don't feel that excuses it from the issues it has. Let it never be said that I think this series is terrible, there are some genuinely enjoyable aspects of it, like the Tick himself. I just feel that the series as a whole is stuck in a big, sticky meringue of confusion, and it can't get unstuck, no matter how big the spoon. And I give the Tick two eyes out of five. So, the Tick, is it watchable? Eh, yes and no. I guess that depends on whether you care about animation quality and layering issues. If you don't, then sure, it's definitely watchable. But if you do, well, there's plenty of other shows to watch. Is it enjoyable? I'd have to say yes, since I've certainly seen worse, and there is an indisputable charge of childlike wonder buzzing through this whole series. Is it memorable? Well, judging from the fact that it's now considered a cult classic and there's a new live-action Tick series on Amazon, I'd say that the Tick is a hulking hematophage that won't be burrowing away anytime soon. Hey viewers, do you want to stay up to date with all the latest Eye of Soul news? You can follow Eye of Soul on Twitter as well as on Facebook at twitter.com slash eyeofsoul299 and facebook.com slash eyeofsoul. Also, be sure to check out more videos over at her channel by following the links here as well as in the description down below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Cartoon Watchers channel to see more of your favorite reviewers channel hop through their favorite shows. And remember, the next review is just a click away.